everyone. We are so happy you're here uh, for this historic bill signing. And I'm just very happy to lend the uh, pride flag, which was borrowed from my office. Yeah. Uh, and with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Representative Jeff Curry, uh, who, along with uh, Rahab Ali Brennan, was a guiding force in this important legislation. Thank you very much, Senate Governor. I just want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, you know, setting aside marriage equality uh, that took place here in Connecticut a decade ago, I'm not sure how you really topped that, but this year we had one of the most successful LGBTQ plus legislative sessions in Connecticut's history. Um, and I think it is monumental that we're sitting here today with Governor Lamont, Lieutenant Governor Beiswitz, um, so that he can lend his signature and uh, his support uh, for our community and to highlight all the great successes that we've had this year and for years to come. Um, we have a couple guest speakers that we're going to introduce to us so that they can share their um, comments on working on some of the legislation. And also I want to thank uh, a number of the legislators who are with us today. Uh, we have Senator Logan, uh, Senator Slap, uh, Representative Palm, <laughs> Senator Anwar, Representative Finish Wilson. Did I miss anyone? No? We're good. <laughs> uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over first to uh, Alice Rosenthal, uh, who's going to share her story on the PrEP bill. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Alice Rosenthal. We'd like correct? to be able to hear you. Oh, you that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Spell your name, please. Uh, A-L-I-C-E, and then Rosenthal, R-O-S as in Sam, E-N-T-H-A-L. And who are you representing? And I work with the Center for Children's Advocacy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the act um, pre preventing HIV was a wonderful bill, truly a victory for vulnerable children in the state of Connecticut. Um, by removing barriers to access to HIV prevention medication, the state of Connecticut really is moving towards our goal of getting to zero new infections. So we're really excited. Um, this bill was initially started um, and sparked by the passion of Dr. Kristen Wagner, who will speak in a minute. Um, she's an infectious disease doctor in New Haven at Fairhaven Community Health Center, and her zealous advocacy to ensure that all of her patients have access to PrEP and to HIV prevention medication brought her to our office. And she said, you know, I really want my patients to have more access to PrEP, and I wanted, I have some young people who, who need it, but they don't want to talk to their parents about um, about their sexual activity and, and their background, and so I wanted to know, what can I do about that? And we said, well, the, the law doesn't support that right now, but we are happy to work with you um, to figure out and work with some of our senators. So we did, and we have a passionate coalition of clinicians, advocates, and legislators all here behind us who supported this, but we wouldn't have gotten to the finish line today um, with the governor without the tireless work of Representative Jeff Curry um, and Rahib Ali Brennan, there you are. Okay. Okay. Great timing. Perfect timing. Um, and then also the public health um, representative Steinberg and Senator Abrams were real champions of the bill. So thank you all so much for being here. We're really excited. And I'm happy to have you. Okay. So next up we have uh, Kristen Wagner. Dr. Kristen Wagner. Doctor, could you identify yourself again, please? Certainly. Is this Kristen with a K? It's K R Y S T N Wagner. And I'm an HIV physician at Fairhaven Community Healthcare in New Haven. Thank you. There are people watching this and listening live. Thank you. So one in every five new HIV infections in the United States are among youth ages 13 to 24. And of these, 80% are among young gay and bisexual males. As Alice said, this bill began four years ago with the question, how can we get HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP to at-risk teens? And can this medication be prescribed to them in the same fashion as other sexual health services that did not require parental consent? So as you know, this question led me to Jay Cyclic and Alice Rosenthal at the Center for Children's Advocacy. And they were tenaciously advocated for, the amend for amending existing legislation to include PrEP for Connecticut's vulnerable youth. I want to emphasize that at the heart of this bill being signed today by Governor Lamont are the needs of LGBTQ teens who are unable or not ready, yet ready to come forward to their parents or guardians and disclose their status. This bill is one very important step towards allowing them to be empowered to protect their sexual health. 
It would not have passed without the voices of the LGBT community and allies. And in particular, we are indebted to Representative Jeff Curry, who co-sponsored the bill and educated his legislative colleagues. And to Sam Smith, who was willing to tell his personal story in order to protect other teens from HIV infection. So I thank uh, Governor Lamont for signing today's legislation so that we can all go forward to make this goal a reality. Thank you. Well done. And so next up, one of the other successes we had was that Connecticut is now the first state that statutorily has created an LGBTQ Health and Human Services Network. Uh, and so what we're going to do is during the first year, uh, we're going to perform a needs assessment and find those deserts throughout the state in which we don't currently have any services, programs, providers, uh, and essentially any safe spaces for our community. Uh, I'm here to offer a few words on that. And someone who testified on committee is Patrick Dunn. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my two ends or one? It's two ends, no E. <laughs> Um, I'm not Irish enough for the E. <laughs> um, I'm the executive director of the New Haven Pride Center, one of Connecticut's two LGBTQ plus community centers. Uh, so when Jeff approached me about this bill and about this idea, I was um, really excited because as someone who works in our community every day, um, and literally every day physically in my office, but also every day as someone who works in our community's bars and um, it, going to every single Pride around the state, we now have like 15, um, it's, it's incredible to see the work that happens in the various pockets all over the state, but it's also very sad to see the areas that literally have nothing. Um, and there is massive differences between communities. You can go to New Haven and have access to a community center, three bars, uh, health services, an amazing Fairhaven clinic, but then you can go three towns over and there's literally nothing, um, particularly if you're a person of color, transgender, uh, or don't speak English as your first or native language. And so having a bill that is going to bring together the people from all over our state, the, the health care providers, the um, organizational leaders, people like Robin McKeelan, who's also here from True Colors, bringing us together in a space where we can share what works and talk through what doesn't work so that we can all learn together and move forward as a community for a greater Connecticut overall. Um, I really want to uh, thank both of our representatives who uh, co-sponsored this bill and um, brought me in to testify. It was an incredible experience for me personally. Uh, and I'm so excited that we are a leading state yet again on another LGBTQ plus or LGBTQQIP2SAA community. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that again? LGBTQQIP2SAA. It's my party trick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm so glad that Connecticut yet again is a leading state um, in, our, in our nation, and I look forward to Connecticut continuing to be a leader. And thank you to everybody who is signing, everybody who brought us here today. Another one of our successes this year was the ban on the gay and trans panic defense. Uh, and Senator Looney's not here. Uh, he was another one of the legislators who offered this up initially, so I just want to show my support and uh, uh, for Senator Looney and uh, for the Senate chamber in general for jumping on the bandwagon with all of our legislation. Uh, we don't necessarily have someone here to speak on that today, but our last speaker is Gretchen Rapa um, from Planned Parenthood, also one of our uh, most outspoken advocates from CT Equality, our uh, Connecticut statewide LGBTQ advocacy organization. So, Gretchen. Thank you. R-A-F-F-A. -F -F Hi, all. My name is Gretchen Rafa from Planned Parenthood. I'm the director of public policy and advocacy, and I also have been serving um, on Connecticut Equality, as Jeff said, a statewide advocacy organization that's been really working over the last um, decade to advance and protect LGBTQ rights. And um, I just want to say I am so incredibly privileged and proud to be standing here today. This legislative session, I've been doing advocacy and policy work for 14 years up here, and this is the first year that we've seen a number of bills that have already been talked about. And I also want to shout out the champions of our newly signed into law paid family medical leave, which also is protecting LGBTQ plus families by expanding the definition of family to include chosen family, because for a lot of queer folks, they have to rely on people, their extended family that is not connected by biological or blood uh, relations. And so today we're celebrating because there is a lot to celebrate, but I also want to make sure that we remember there's so much more work we can be doing in our state and across this country. 
specifically for queer people of color, for transgender people and non-binary people. They are continuously facing threats, um, including uh, death based on their identities in our country because of extreme discrimination and oppression. Nationally, the Trump administration seems determined to continue uh, erasing the progress we've made over the last 50 years since the Stonewall riots. And um, we are seeing bans on trans people serving in the military. We are seeing uh, federal rules to limit access to health care or uh, allowing discrimination against trans people um, in the health care setting. And just employing hate speech every day against the LGBTQ plus community. So we have done so much work in our state to advance rights and protect the rights of LGBTQ plus people. And I want to say that even after 50 years after the Stonewall riot, we celebrated Pride all last month, remind everyone that there is still so much work we need to be doing to protect the most vulnerable within the LGBTQ plus community. And we're going to keep fighting uh, from Planned Parenthood and Connecticut Equality and all the advocates. And I want to just give my heartfelt thanks to Representative Curry and Representative Ali Brennan for being leaders in our General Assembly this year to really um, be outspoken because representation matters and we need to get more LGBTQ plus people elected into office. So thank you so much. Thank you, Governor well Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Vice President. And so before we turn it over to the governor so that he can put pen to paper, uh, I do want to take a moment and thank all of the other advocates who are here with us today representing their various organizations and also as well as uh, the lobbyists who worked with us lockstep to really get this legislation done. Uh, some of those who couldn't be here today, including Joe Graybars, who was Connecticut's first openly gay legislator, uh, and Kate Robinson, who were both instrumental in having a lot of this done. And also, um, Sam Smith was mentioned earlier. Sam Smith, if you didn't have a chance to catch his testimony in front of the Public Health Committee around our HIV prevention bill, pull that up because that testimony is what turned the tide on this piece of legislation. So I just want to give a special shout out to Sam. Governor, it's all yours. Without further ado. <laughs> I will say why this is important to me. Um, you know, it's about public safety. It's about um, keeping our citizens safe. As you pointed out, it's also about Connecticut being a leader. And uh, we are going to continue to be a leader in LGBTQ rights and respect and pride and diversity because I think that's one of the things that makes Connecticut great and makes America great. And we're going to stay a leader on these fronts, and I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the lead on this. So without further ado... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All good? 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. <laughs>